the people who are talking about, that you can choose this first, it doesn't have to be, have to be a last resort. Okay, so if you are on Facebook, I'm going to ask you to check in. If you get to um, find the men's health lecture under our Health by Design, you can check in. And does anybody know why we're focusing on men's health? First of all, it is Men's Health, National Men's Health Month, so that comes up after National Women's Health Month, so we have Mother's Day and then Father's Day. But the reason why I'm focusing on men is because notoriously, after 13 years in practice, I've noticed that I treat a lot more women than men. And so we started getting curious about why that fact might be, um, particularly because women actually go to doctors it doesn't matter if it's a chiropractor, a nutritionist, a medical doctor, any practice, practitioner across the board will tell you women go to doctors four times as much. But did you know that women also outlive men? <laughs> then we ask the question, is that a coincidence or not? <laughs> How many of you got to read the article that I wrote in Natural Awakenings about the seven excuses why men don't go to doctors? Did you read it? Good! That's good. So we'll touch on a little bit about, about that because I want to get the men's feedback about how much of that is true and kind of try to dig in and get to get to the root because I think as men, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if I quote anything manly that I'm wrong about, tell me because you're the governing body, but um, I want to understand if any of this is true so that we can reach out and help more men because in our practice, when men do come, very often they get results faster than the women do, and women kind of get frustrated about that. So we don't know why that is or if we can blame it on hormones or whatnot, but if we could get the men in, we know that they'd have great success stories to share. And men are kind of funny in the way that I think the proof is in the pudding, right? So they send the wives and the children and the rest of the family, and kind of as guinea pigs, if they get results and they say, okay, well maybe I'll give it a whirl or I'll give it a try. But then once the men do come in and they get their results, they tell everybody. So we're just curious about the psychology of that and how we can get more men in. Well, what's all the men and men, 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 women and kids here? No money left. They can have a seat right left. there. Would you take ones? Yeah, they put the priority on the rest of the family. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about myself for those of you who don't know me. I'm Dr. Christy Harvell, and I've been in practice for about, well, for 13 years, a little over 13 years now. And I started up in New York State. I practiced there for 12 years. And I've been in Jacksonville for a little over a year, about a year and a half. And so I'm seeing the same trends down here in Jacksonville, Florida, as I saw up in upstate New York as far as what types of population the people we're reaching or are interested in care or what they're coming in for and kind of what our findings are through our testing. So lo and behold, even though you have sunny Florida, you've got the same health issues that we had up north. So we are in the same, other than climate, we've got the same foods available to us, the same stress levels, the same work ethic, the same inability to unplug from everyday, you know, day-to-day -day work kind of a thing. So those are, the, those are the main challenges that we're facing and that are interfering with our health and well-being. So I got started in practice because, like many of you, I was a consumer of the medical industry. I was in school and I was studying to become a medical doctor and I started having my own, you know, a pain condition and I was seeking care and I didn't know what I know today and so I kind of got, I like to say, kind of shuffled through the system, you know, bounced from specialist to specialist, doing all these different tests and poking and prodding until the point where they were suggesting an exploratory surgery. So has anybody seen the, um, the little image on Facebook, the little girl that says, I'm not an experiment? I love that image. It's actually on one of our handouts. So that's kind of the feeling that I started to get. I don't want to be an experiment. You can't just open me up and hope to find something or tell me you found something and not really know if you found it. So that's kind of when the light bulb went on for me and I started looking for other measures because it just wasn't good enough. To me, health meant something more. So eventually, I found what I found a philosophy through chiropractic college that resonated with my idea of what real health was. 
And so through the chiropractic philosophy, they taught us that the body heals itself, that real health comes from within. There's no one-size-fits-all magic cure, take a pill that's going to suit everybody. Okay, so we're all individual and unique. And your body is capable of healing itself as long as two things aren't happening. Number one, as long as there isn't an interference. So there are things, and we'll discuss what things can interfere with the body's natural healing process. And also, as long as there isn't some kind of critical deficiency, like a nutrition, nutritional deficiency or some kind of building block that isn't available in the body. So if those two things aren't there, you guys see it on a daily basis. You cut your skin, it grows back together, break a bone, it heals. The body is adaptable, right? Yes. So through chiropractic, I knew all of that. And then you graduate one day, and they give you the keys to your practice. And who was coming to my doors? Not these miracle patients that I wanted to help, you know, with all their woes. I was getting neck pain, back pain, and headache patients. And I don't want to say that I'm not... <laughs> I'm not interested in that, but my neck pain, back pain, headache patients were coming to me with a big, long health history of other things that I know the chiropractic adjustment is powerful, and we can talk about how the adjustment helps more than just pain through the nervous system, um, but not everybody got better with the magic adjustment. And so we knew that nutrition would be a big piece of my practice, but I didn't really know where to start because even in nutrition, you can still apply nutrition in a medical manner. And what I mean by that is you can give a pill, even though it's a more natural, safer pill, for a symptom, right? So you can look up, we've got a, a dictionary here, you know, got headaches, what nutrients are good for headaches, and you can look up the RDA and go and to like a GNC or any kind of health food store and start picking and choosing supplements. But what you don't know is if you're getting to the underlying cause of that headache or whatever your symptom is. So over the course of years of bringing nutrition in and different sales reps coming to me and trying to sell me on their products and what I should and shouldn't carry on my shelves and recommend, um, I realized that I needed more training in nutrition. And so it wasn't until I came upon kinesiology, which is a fancy word for muscle testing, that I really felt like I started to help people and get to the underlying root of problems and help them long term. And so that's kind of what I'm going to talk to you tonight, <coughs> excuse me, about um, what nutrition response testing is, how we use the muscle testing to individualize an approach and to get to the underlying cause of each person's individual issue. So if the topic tonight had been headaches, which it's not, it's men's health, um, but I'm going to teach you how men's health, it doesn't matter what we write up here, whether we write prostate issues or insomnia or low libido or heart disease or diabetes, whatever it is, the approach as far as what I'm going to do is the same. That doesn't mean that you're going to leave with the same protocol as you, you, or you, but what it means is that we have a system to check in and the body can tell us what it's needing and what the priority areas are. So if everybody came in here with heart condition, and I'm not a doctor, I don't diagnose heart disease and I don't treat heart disease, I treat people who might have a weakness or an insufficiency in their heart, you know, you might have an actual heart issue. Yours could be caused by adrenals, which is where you produce stress. Yours could be related to thyroid insufficiency. Yours could actually be a circulatory problem. Yours could be a gastrointestinal thing where you're not absorbing nutrition that the heart needs. So can you see how that would start to be different regardless of what the word is up here? Okay. So what we know forever and ever is regardless of what the symptom is, there's absolutely and always a nutritional deficiency that's related to that. And when we have nutritional deficiencies, we have unhappy organs. Our organs don't function the way they were designed to function. Okay? The reason why we put this on a triangle is because if we change any one leg of this triangle, it's going to change any of the others. And you can also read it forward or backward or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we know the more organ dysfunction we have, the worse the symptoms get, the more nutritional deficiencies are going on. But this doesn't always have to be symptomatic. By the time we get to this nutritional deficiency, organ dysfunction, this could be going on for years, sometimes up to 8 to 10 years before the body finally will show this. And the reason for that is because 
If the heart is unhappy, it will start to steal nutrition from other less important organs, like your bones and muscles, for example. And so your body, being adaptable and able to heal and compensate, will do a good job at that for a really long time until something else breaks down in the chain because it stole too much nutrition. Okay, so that's why you don't always know what's going on underneath the surface. And our job with nutrition response testing is to try to arrest this progression anywhere on the triangle so that we can be preventative. So we don't always wait until symptoms. We actually have wellness practice where once people are well, we keep them well and we do well checks on them. So that's something you men are very good at. <laughs> You're the wait till it's broke kind of a thing, right? Why is that? <laughs> so I have some theories of my own. So how many of you have ever said, I don't trust doctors? You've got, a, you've got one on the one. And it doesn't have to just be the men in the room. You've said it too. I said it. Have you ever thought of why that is? Is it because you've gotten a mistruth from a doctor? Yes. 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 Because they treat it as a business, not as a... As a business? Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. So... What's always a good thing, and I'm going to try to come up with a solution for each of these. So if we're having mistrust, we're probably not getting, a, it's probably a, a mistruth, something that doesn't resonate with us. We're not getting the full story, and we don't feel like we're being heard. Mm -hmm. And so there are doctors that will spend time and sit down and take a thorough history. So I just always coach patients. Don't necessarily give up on health care, but find a practitioner that resonates with you. You know, your health is something that's intimate and needs to be close, so you need to have a close relationship with your practitioner, somebody that you trust and who understands the way you want to approach your health and isn't just dictating and demanding on you. And guess what? If the, your current doctor can't do that, whether it's an alternative doctor or a medical doctor or a chiropractor or whatnot, get another one. You have the right, it's your body, to get the care that you're demanding. Now, I'm not saying that you walk in and you know better than your doctor. Your doctor is a highly trained professional. But there are things that I'm not willing to do. And if a doctor won't listen to me, I'm going to find somebody else, you know. And your doctor, I want you to know your doctor is supposed to be there to listen to you and give advice, not to judge you on your, what your ultimate decision is. So, doctor is educator. They're supposed to educate you, but not just on what they want you to do. They're supposed to educate you on both sides of the fence so that you can make an educated decision on what's the best decision for you and your family and your ethics and your belief systems. Yeah. Okay? So, I think the mistrust comes from also sometimes feeling judged. How many of you have said, I don't want to spend the money on the, on the office visit or the testing? Anybody? We have such an honest dream, I love it. Because <laughs> you work hard for your money, so why would you put your money into, again, going back to the trust factor, if it's something that you're not seeing results, right? So sometimes I think um, the money thing comes with value, right? You're willing to spend money on something that you believe in or that you see value or you get results in. So that's, again, the proof is in the pudding. So in our office, we do muscle testing, and it's unusual and weird, but one of my mottos for the whole 13 years I've been in practice is weird works. So we're comfortable being the doctors that are willing to do the weird, unusual stuff because we know sometimes, oftentimes, the traditional isn't the be-all, end-all answer. Okay, But being weird is okay if we get results. If we don't get the results, then we're just weird. <laughs> we actually had shirts for our 10-year anniversary, and it was fun. It was like our pride banner. <laughs> um, but when the money issue comes up, we like to coach people on the fact that if you're not willing to spend the money today on preventative natural measures and whole foods and nutrition and giving your body the nourishment and building blocks that it needs, ultimately you're going to end up putting your money somewhere where you're already telling me you don't want to put it in a system that you don't believe in. So the sooner we can interrupt this cycle, the less expensive the long-run health consequences are going to be. And so our, peop you know, our patients who come and listen to our talks and who choose this type of you know, nutrition response testing or chiropractic or any kind, kind of alternative natural care, um, they don't want to be consumers of the medical industry. But if you just have that wait-and-see type of an approach, 
the resources that are available or the likelihood that food and nutrition is going to work becomes less likely. So the sooner we catch it, the sooner we can interact in the cycle, the more likely we're going to have an impact. And the more choices that you have, you know, if we wait till that emergency situation or that big blowout in your health, you know, you're getting shuffled right through the medical model at that point. Well, sometimes I feel like physicians that, yeah. is that you know, like you, women go to car, get your car repaired. Yes. They take advantage of you because you're a woman, like, and, and the guy. And I feel like you go to the doctor because you're a guy. Yeah. You know, they might just give you anything. And Brush it off. Through. Well, they, remember, I told you, this phenomenon of doctors, or men not going to doctors, is across the board. So maybe that's, it's reactionary, too, where they're just like, okay, you know, he's not going to listen, he's going to do what he wants, he doesn't want to be here anyway, give him the quick prescription and get him on his way. I don't know, because I don't do that, I'm not a medical doctor, I can't speak, but who knows, you know, this is the whole cycle of, I have no idea where it started or where it'll end, but... Kind of the, the analogy that you can look at it is the way men and women buy shoes. Yeah, how we buy shoes? Well, how much time do you take deciding on a pair of shoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, a long time. Right. And, yeah, and but what do you base it on when you get a pair of shoes? You know, I mean, okay, they work. They work. <laughs> oh, they work. <laughs> They're comfortable, They're, they're, they support my feet. Yeah, it's work. all like yeah. reason. You're not worried about looking cute, <laughs> matching your bag, you're all of a sudden I know. <laughs> Black shoes, brown shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the Navy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Navy goes with everything. Okay, how many of you have had something going on and you didn't go to a doctor because you thought, ah, oh, it's probably nothing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you know? <laughs> Well, you know away. it's probably nothing. It might go away. Yeah. So, in our practice, we don't treat symptoms. <coughs> We're not interested in just treating symptoms, because like I said, mm -hmm. that's a pill for a problem, even though our pills are a lot more natural and safer than some of the you know med medications out there. Um, your body is intelligent. So, in the ultimate situation, you want your body talking to you. And that's what I love about nutrition response testing is because it's my way of listening to what your body, what story your body is telling on a day-to-day -day basis as it's dynamic and changing and growing, okay? So that symptom is like the check engine light. Do you ignore that too? Yeah. No. You said yeah! <laughs> hey, if you did ignore the check engine light, what would happen? Well, then she'd be on the side of the radio. Yeah. But could it... Could it end up being a way more expensive oh, yeah. problem than if you just went and got the little oil change or whatever it possibly could have been, That's the fluids right. topped off or the filters changed, right? right? So we can't do that with our bodies, right? We have one body. We can't replace our filters or take them out and rinse them off and wring them out and shove them back in. It would be cool if we could, right? Yeah. So the check engine light is the call to action. So we don't treat the symptoms, but it tells us the body's saying, hey, I don't like what's going on, I don't agree with that food, I'm sensitive to that chemical. There's a lot of things the body is it's capable of telling you. A lot of times when we ignore and we suppress and we just shove it down, our bodies, and we lose communication with the body. The body becomes less intelligent, and then you don't realize. It's a slow progression of like, oh, pain is normal. Because you don't know pain is normal. Pain is never normal. Yeah. It's not normal. Does the body tell you there's an inflammatory process? I'm angry over here. I'm irritated. Something went, Something started that process. So we're not going to treat the pain and numb the pain and just give the Motrin or Aleve or Advil or whatever it might be. We're going to go back a step further and say, why? Why is the pain there? What's causing yeah. it? Why is your pain unique to your pain to your pain to your pain? Okay. Where it's guys, we're supposed to tough it out. Hey, that's on my list. You cheated. <laughs> you fall down. I'm tough. I don't need help. That's number six. And then I said, let me guess, you're lost and you don't need directions either, right? You're so stubborn. <laughs> you're so stubborn. You are tough, and that's what attracted women to you in the first place. That's why we couple up in life, right? But we want you to be tough for a really long time, not just during that cute, you know, honeymoon phase. 
So that's why we get so frustrated with you when you don't go. And you know the other half of this is why the women nag. So I'm picking, I'm going to pick on women tonight too, not just. We're going to be so much more understanding of each other by the end of the lecture. <laughs> okay, and then how about I don't have time? Have you ever not made the appointment because you just don't have time and can't fit it in your busy schedule? So my retort to that is, if you don't have time now to take care of the little tech engine light and the quick little fixes, how are you going to have time later in life to spend time at all these big doctor's appointments and blood work and stress tests and on and on and appointments? So that's where we see young people and something might have helped, you know, broken down in their systems and it's easy to get them back up to recovery because they're young and they're adaptable mm -hmm. and they haven't used up all their reserves. And we see people in, you know, middle age and some of them are already in really good health and something might have just started going wrong or they might have had something going on for a progression and they kind of stuffed it down and waited and now it's a bigger issue and we've got to kind of deal with it for longer. But we do also see older people in this practice where their body's little alarm systems were going off for years and years and they didn't do anything about it or they didn't know that there was something that you can actually do for yourself because that's the system that they grew up in and you're supposed to work your whole life for retirement and enjoy retirement, right? And feel good and energetic and have life. Like we all wait like, oh I can't wait till I retire and all the plans I have and all this stuff. And then how many of those people end up spending those retirement years and their retirement savings on emergency medical care and all the appointments? We see it time and time again. And so can we help those people? It's less likely that we can. We can definitely improve quality of life, but some of those changes in the body eventually are not reversible. So we love to get people in sooner and teach them about health and wellness, get them well, check in on them occasionally to make sure new stuff isn't coming into the system and robbing them of health or, health or starting to sneak up to the point where new symptoms bubble up to the surface and then keep them well like that. So if you don't have time for the appointment now, how are you ever going to have the time later to deal with this lifestyle that's, that, that'll come on you? It's like you pay now or pay later. Pay now or pay later. Sure. It's true. Um, fear of the unknown. Is that a reason why maybe you haven't gone to the doctor? Yeah. So some people are like scared of the result, like they've got a fear in them, like they know something's wrong, but their neighbor or so and so went to the doctor and they found out that they have you know, left and they've got five medications in this machine that they sleep with on their face and follow-up appointments and invasive procedures or, you know, left with missing body parts after they went and all this kind of stuff. That's what happens, right? <laughs> well, that doesn't happen here. <laughs> we have a really fun practice where we get people well. We don't deal with body fluids. We don't have scalpels or anything sharp. It's really fun. I and mean, we just give people super healthy nutrition and start to modify the diet in a gradual manner that eventually can become a lifestyle change. And then we let them go on their way and live their life. Doesn't that sound good? Sounds good. And I'm not painting a pretty picture. That's the practice that we have. And that's, and that's what's possible. And that's what we want people to know. Like, sometimes when I don't feel good and something happens in my body, or I'm fighting something or whatever, I'm always so grateful that I know what I know. Because there's so much that we can do for our own benefit. And I don't think that the medical model's painting that picture. You know, I think they're painting a lot of fear. And kind of like a reliance, like a dependency, like we know more and more situations where it's a take this for life, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just comfortable with that. Well, they want to cut yeah. yeah. Well, remember we were talking about this, so they don't have this whole picture, right? So you go in and they're just dealing up here on this level for you. So what are your options when you're just going for symptom care? Oops, yeah. Suppress the symptoms. That's, a, that's the whole thing. So that's my challenge, is go walk into your medical office on Monday, sit down and wait for the doctor to come in, and say, I feel great. They're going to look at you like, why are you wasting my time? <laughs> Get out. I'm going to have a waiting room full of people, right? right. <laughs> what are they going to offer you? Okay. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> right? <laughs> and my patient, this comes from my patient's mouth. So that's what they tell him. 
that they might be proud and go in and say, hey, I'm doing this nutrition program, and I'm using whole food nutrition, and I'm cutting out carbs, and I'm doing this and that. What do you think, doc? And the doc immediately <laughs> looks at the paper and the numbers. Show me the numbers, right? All right, well, it looks like it's working, so keep doing it. Would they ever recommend that to the next person that walks in? Some of them will. Don't get me wrong. There are enlightened doctors out there, and the best case, I think the best case scenario is always using both at the appropriate time. There's things that I can't do with just nutrition and, and food and chiropractic. There's a lot I can do, but knowing when it's time to make that call and when it's time to refer and vice versa, on their side, knowing that there's practitioners that can teach people health and wellness and keeping people well and handhold. Like, I have the time to take the time with the patient to handhold and teach them about diet and figure out what's the, you know, what's the perfect situation for them. No two people necessarily need the same diet advice. So just like we said, headaches or pain, and each of you could have different reasons behind that or underlying causes, you guys are all different as far as your activity levels, your genetic makeup, your health histories, your exposures in life, your diet and nutrition. So you need different diets. And there's no way to know that by reading the book. There's no one-size-fits-all kind of a situation that way either. Okay. So you want me to pick on the women now?